So this is my completed box for Annie at Miss Garden Grove 1. I will put the link to her YouTube channel down below. She also has a store and she had asked me if we couldn't do a personal swap and um, she wanted one of these boxes. So um, there's a lot of detail to it so I will. I've had a lot of requests for a tutorial so I did my best. I um, just went along with each process and tried to show how that I did it. So I will put that up after this part of the video. Annie, I hope you love your box. Hello everyone. I'm going to start the tutorial by showing you the box. It's just these plain um, cigar boxes that you get from Michael's or from any craft store. So I'm going to begin by painting the whole thing with a coat of gesso. And I will be also painting over all of the hardware. Um, oftentimes when I do these boxes, I take the hardware off, because, but in this case, I do want them to have the shabby chic look, so I'm going to just paint directly over them. So I'm going to paint the whole thing with gesso all the way inside and out, and then I'm going to paint some pink acrylic paint in places on the edge and, all, and maybe over the hardware on the bottom and the inside. I'm not going to do the top because I'm going to be covering this part with fabric. So that's how I'm going to start off. So I'll see you in a bit. So I have finished with the painting. I painted it with the gesso and then I painted the sides and the inside and the bottom with just a random coat of pink paint. And then I left the top with just the gesso because I'm going to put fabric on that. I painted all the hardware. So then the next step is to make the piece that goes all over it to make the shadow box. And this is just made out of heavyweight chipboard. So it's a thickness kind of like that. And you're going to make it so that it goes, fits straight directly on top of the box. Um, of course, the corners are going to be square. The corners on the box are a little bit rounded, but that's not going to be any problem. We end up covering that over with um, a ribbon and lace later. So not a big deal. So what we're going to start with is we're going to start with, I just used a couple of these boxes from the Tim Holtz configuration boxes. And you wouldn't even have to. You could make your own um, just a little box. But these boxes are 3 inch wide by a um, little over an inch and a half tall. And same on the width on the top. So anyway, I ended up placing the boxes together like this. And so I glued these two together and I used glossy accents for all of the gluing of everything. So I glued those together and then what I did is I took the side pieces first and the side pieces I measured at one and a half inches wide by eight just plus a little smidgen um, inches for the sides. So I'm going to end up just putting glue right here and gluing that together. So this is just for demonstration here. And then I'm going for the, um, excuse me, that's the top and the bottom. These are the sides here. So I'm going to put the sides, glue them on together like that, and then I'm going to glue um, I'm going to wait to do the other side and then I'm going to glue one of the bottom pieces and I have it so that the bottom pieces and the top pieces fit inside the side piece like this. So it's like, like that. So then I just glue those together and the glossy accent seems to hold it. I've made several of these boxes and it seems to work fine in it. Um, I don't really seem to make need to make a lid and then I just go on around the box until I end up coming up with a box that looks like this on top of my my box and this piece here I put in this is going to be the doorway and it's the same width as the sides I haven't glued it in up here at the top yet because I want to make sure that the doorway is square so I'm going to leave that until a little later so then you just make sure your box fits all the way around. And then we'll go on from there. Thank you. So the next step is to paint all of the box and the chipboard piece. 
I'm going to use this Annie Sloan chalk paint in old white, but you could use any color. This is just the paint that I happen to use, but you could use any acrylics. So I'm going to paint this piece and I'm going to paint the box except for the top. I'm going to put fabric on that next. I'm going to paint all the rest of the box and I'm going to go ahead and add some to the feet. These are the Tim Holtz feet that I'm going to use. So I'm going to do all of that next. Okay, before painting this part of it, I did go ahead and gesso it and I'm also going to put some pink paint on it. But I'm also going to add the pieces that go on this part of the storefront. So this piece here is a rectangle um, cut out of the chipboard and this is one and three quarter inches by six and one quarter inch. And then I'm going to glue on top of that with glossy accents the second piece, which is one and one quarter inch by five and three quarter inches. And on the corners of this piece and the next piece, I use my crocodile corner chomper, the green one, and it is the stub side is what I ended up using this side right here to make the edges like this to make the ticket stub style. So I'm going to put that on top of that one and I'm going to just glue it on with glossy accents and the next piece is one inch by five and one half inches so these will all get glued on and then it'll get glued onto there and it also will be painted. Before I add um, some more of the paint I added a couple of um, other items down here on this piece here I added some flourishes and I didn't have the same kind of resin that I used on the other ones but for this one I just had some of these chipboard pieces so I just put two of uh, those on there and just gesso it over them and then those will get paint over them and for the stairs I used this 3 8 inch square piece of wood and now most all of this wood stuff here I got at Michael's and I cut pieces of that to go in the doorway. So there's three stacked together, two on the back and one on the front to make the stairs. And then this top piece here is um, two and a quarter inches wide by one and seven eight inches high. And then I put a piece down in here that was two inches by one and five eighths inches. And check your measurements because um, there, you might need to make it a little, couple of little corrections, but anyway, that is what I came up with for mine. And um, I also cut a piece of this trim, and I got this at Home Depot. And the trim is about three quarter inch wide, and I cut this piece um, eight and a half inches long, and it's going to go on the top up here like that. So, and now I will start my painting. There are lots of little finishing details. Um, I made the frame that is going to go in the window like that. And I just made that out of um, this little balsa trim that I got from Michaels. And um, it is just, let me see here, this is half, half an inch thick and so I I just cut it with this little saw that I also got at Michaels and then on top of that I layered some just a little bit thinner so that makes a really nice finished um, window frame and as you notice I have mitered all the edges so I cut using this on this top trim I was able to use my Tim Holtz scissors and if you'll notice on there's a couple of gaps right in here there's a gap and in here there's a gap now if I were to put the window frame on and just glue it onto that top piece there would be a gap there and I don't want that I want it to look real finished and it's just the same with any building or any art you just need to layer so I have this little teeny piece of trim also from Michaels and I'm just going to paint it and glue this on before I put my window frame on. So that goes there. I also lined the edge with this beautiful lace and then where the box and the top meet I used this velvet trim and for the carpet I used this pink burlap that I had gotten from Michaels and I also made a stair runner. 
And I don't know if I showed before on the stairs, I just made that out of two inch pieces of this trim here. Three, two in the back, and then one in the front, um, and then painted and then put in there. And for the door, I just cut it out of chipboard. It's just two inches thick, and then I measured it to fit into the opening. And then I cut out a window on it, put one of these little pieces here for my door handle, and put this little piece of trim here, and then put some hinges on the back, and I have those glued. So the next thing I'm going to do on this is paint it with the old white chalk paint, and then go over it with the pink, and then the soft wax. So I will finish all of these pieces up. I also put a little bit of half back pearls right back up in there. So that is how that looks. So we are getting down. I'm also, one of the next things I'm going to do is I'm going to glue on the feet with glossy accents. So I will be doing that. And then um, that is that. So now I'm working on some of the details that go inside of the box. Um, these girls were taken from the Forever Young Cricut cartridge, and this is um, on my Cricut Craft Room page. I had uh, made up this, and I um, what I do is I cut out several of the girls, and then I stack them so that they will have um, be firmer and they won't be so flexible. So that'll give them a little bit of stability while they're standing in the window. So this girl right here, I have her at 2.028 width by 4.5 height. And this girl here, I have her at 2.056 um, with a height of 4.5. And then this hat that I put on this girl here that hat is at 0.944 by 0.833. And this hat that goes on this girl is at 1.734 by 0 0.847. So I will cut those out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them out um, on some script paper. I just loaded the script paper on my 12 by 12 Cricut mat. And I'm using some paper from the Prima script pad. So I'm going to cut those out on my Cricut machine. And then also I made um, one of these resin pieces here. I believe this was a Melissa Francis. And anyway, the last one that I did, I actually had a window, but I don't have any more windows, but this is beautiful. So I just took a picture off of the internet of a garden tea party and sized it to fit in this frame, and I put a piece of transparency in between. So when I put it in the window, it'll look like you're looking out to a tea party garden scene. So that's what I'm working on right now. Okay, so I finished making my little girls that is going to go in the window. So here is this one. Um, I did the five layers of just the regular cardstock, and I just used a script paper, and then I just made the dress on the top layer, and also did the hat with a little flower there. That's the first lady, and then the second lady, I just layered some fabric with some lace on top and made her dress, and then her hat with the rose on top. So those are my ladies. And the next thing I'm going to do is make the furniture. So I made the first chair and these are by no means professional. This is just kind of my way of doing it. I am not a jewelry maker so uh, probably people have a lot better way of doing it than I did it but it, 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 it'll work in the end. So this is going to be the chair and then I'm going to paint it and then I'm going to put the little rosette on top and kind of wrap it around and glue it so it'll have a nice little seat on there. And then for the table I just took three pieces of wire and then just bent them like that. So I will show you real quickly how I did that with one other piece. So I just took the one end and just curled it up 
and I took the other end and did the same thing and then I measured them on top of each other, smoothed them out and measured it on top of each other and then just kept working it down until I got it the same width as the one before. And for the chair, I'm just going to start out showing you the top part because it's hard enough to do without doing it on camera. So I just took a piece of wire and I just um, wound it around for a few times to make the back of the chair. And the nice thing about this wire that I'm using, it is this wire here from the floral section. It's just a value pack of actual floral wire. So it's pretty thin and pretty bendable, but I think once I paint it, then it'll end up with a real nice um, finish on it, and it'll make it thicker too when I paint it. So I kind of want it to be similar to this chair here. It doesn't have to be exact because it's supposed to be kind of like handmade iron furniture. That's kind of the look that we're after. So there is the back of the chair. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this piece right here. And let me see, I think I just need to shorten it up just a tad to make it match the other one. And the nice thing about it is you can kind of fiddle with it after, but it's pretty close. And they're not going to be right together, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm just going to make the seat by putting it around like that. And I want about the same, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to go through this piece here to make the first leg, which will be off to this side. And so that'll make this leg down here. I think I'll go it through one more time so I get a nice firm leg. And then what I'm going to do is I want it the same height as this other one, so I'm just going to bend it around like this to make the feet. And the nice thing about it is you can cut it off when you get the desired height. And or you can just keep bending it around even if it has several layers that's okay. So that's the one leg and then I'll cut two more pieces of wire and go off for the rest of the chair. So that is what the chair is going to look like. And now for the top of the table, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three pieces together. This one will come undone here. All these little pieces here. Stuck in the leg. Okay, I'm going to, for the table, I'm going to take all three of these pieces together, line them up so that they're somewhat the same, like that, and then I'm going to wire them together in the middle. Just take a piece of wire and I'm going to start at kind of the top part of the middle and I'm going to end up just winding it around and then I'll spread the table out so it has the three legs like that and I'm going to put this circle on which is a one and a half inch scallop circle on the top then I'll have my table and for the tablecloth I just cut a piece of this floral rosette fabric and I just made it a little bigger than the circle just cut it freehand and then what I'll do is I'll end up putting a little glue under there so it kind of folds over like that so that'll be the top of the table and then on top of the table I'm going to be putting two of these little china teacups from a little tea party set and then for the vase I just took one of these pieces here and a bead and I'm going to take this little pin and I'm going to stick it up through this bead cap here and I'm going to go through the bead and then I'm going to cut off this top piece and I'm going to stick some glossy accent in there and then I have a little bouquet of 
five of the little wild orchid crafts really small roses and I'm going to stick those right in the hole and then I'll have a vase of flowers that's going to also go on the table. So I'll come back when I'm done with Okay, so I'm on to the very final touches of my box. I have everything glued in down here, my two ladies and the, the table and the teacups and the picture in the background and I have a picture in this doorway as well. And so the next step is to make a transparency that is going to fit in the back of this to make the window so it will be a window and then I also want a transparency to fit this window and then the door goes in there. And so I just use um, my computer and I use my print shop program and this label I got off of graphicsfairy.blogspot.com and I just have Annie's Tea Room because this box is for Annie and then this one down here I just sized it smaller to fit in the doorway. So I'm going to print that out on this transparency film for inkjet printers. Um, mine is an inkjet. If you had a laser, you'd probably have to use that. Um, and so then for, you just pull out the piece of paper and it has a little white tab and the white tab is inserted in first so that the printer will grab it. And then the transparency, the, uh, you put the side that you're gonna print on down um, it has a little bit of a film and that keeps the ink to stick to it. So I will print that out and adhere it to the windows and I will then show you the finished product. Thank you. So here is the inside of the box. Um, I did line it with the fabric and then I made a pocket on the front of it and put a doily over the top of that with a little metal piece for my stash and a little piece of pink seam binding and I did do the half bat pearls around the top half of it and then I also did pearls around the bottom half. So that's the inside. So this is my completed box. This is what the front looks like. And then you just go up here, the door, and it does open like that. It has a picture inside. And I do have Annie's tea room on the door and also on the big window, if you can see it. Picture back there. So, that is the box and the tutorial follows.